Hello, this is Jake B. Man with Golden Fox Farms. Today we are in my honey processing dungeon basement. Uh, and we're going to examine a problem that dogged me as a beginner beekeeper. And I didn't have any good ways to deal with it. And that is wet honey. Uh, we often say in the books that if you harvest only capped honey, it's all going to be dry enough. You're all going to be good. And that just really hasn't proven true for myself. Uh, this past year we had honeys as dry as in the mid-15s coming out of the frames, uh, but in a regular year we can totally bring in some 21.5% honey. It just depends how fast and how wet that flow is when the bees process it. Uh, now, how, how dry should honey be? Um, some of the honey judging bodies have very different uh, approaches to this. Uh, some say they want 16. They want a perfect 16% moisture rate. And that's really just not a practical thing. It makes for a very dry, very rich honey. It also makes for a honey that's more prone to granulate. Uh, some say as long as it's below 18.6% water content, you're okay. That is true for commercially prepared honeys, which are filtered and homogenized and heat treated. If you take a lot of unprocessed honeys at 18.6 they will ferment in relatively short order some of them will ferment immediately uh, more or less the target i use is 17 percent because if i know if i bring it down to 17 percent it's going to have a good shelf stability it's not going to get into that ready to granulate range i'm just trying to thread that middle uh, bob benny talks about drying honey and drier honeys do tend to be a bit more rich on the tongue and a bit more flavor forward, which is also a nice little perk with it. So with that, let's have a look at what I actually do to dry honey. So this is a broken down deep freeze. You can find these on Craigslist or the side of the road at nicer communities. And you take it home and you clean it out and then you outfit it with a couple of different things. And we'll look at them from the top down. Okay, the first thing we're going to see is this right here. That's my thermostat from my incubator. But in the wintertime when I'm processing troubled honeys, I don't need it in the incubator because I'm not making queen. So I have that in here so I know the exact temperature this is operating at. Okay, this is the top half of the drying cabinet. And there's a couple of different things up here that need description all their own. One is this thing. This is a wireless thermostat now i have my really good high high dollar thermostat in the door that is to make sure this thing is telling the truth this thing sends a signal to a wireless base that i can have anywhere i want for convenience this is my thermal controller for my heating pad it's at the bottom of this there is a seed starting pad that i use to keep the temperature into the mid 90s i try to keep this cabinet right at 97 degrees because that's very similar to the temperature inside of a beehive and is a temperature that's plenty warm enough to dry honeys or to melt crystals. And it's also cool enough to where we shouldn't be destroying too much of the flavor compounds. Now, speaking of destroyed flavor compounds, you can have this happen with just a little bit too much heat. Now, I'm going to show you a jar of honey. That is a kind of normal looking jar of honey. That same honey, left at too high of a temperature, starts to caramelize and decompose. So we want to really minimize the amount of heat we're throwing into these honey products as we process them. That's why I'm using 97 degrees, because I think it's as close to a consistently safe temperature as you're going to find. What else we got in here? We have this thing. This is the mixing controller, and we'll get to the mixer later. Notice it's set to a relatively low speed. These things are totally strong enough to where if you crank it up all the way, and the honey is so viscous below, it'll actually overheat these units and burn them up. It really just needs to be on enough to spin the honey. And we'll look at the honey spinner after this. And that green dome you're seeing over there is a small personal sized fan. And that fan's job is just to keep the air moving and turbid in this box. That way we don't have a hot layer develop up here or a cold layer develop below. The last thing on this top shelf is this. This is a tub of desiccant or uh, silica gel beads 
These suck moisture out of the atmosphere. They're green because they've reacted. When the stuff is reset, it's a pale Gatorade orange. So I know this has pulled all the moisture out of this cabinet for the most part. Uh, to reset this stuff, I just need to put it into an oven at 250 degrees and give it about an hour. That'll drive all the moisture off, and then I can reuse this more or less indefinitely. That way, when moisture comes off of that honey that's below, due to the mixing and the heat, the moisture is captured in the desiccant and doesn't return to the honey. Okay, and here's the bottom half of our dryer unit. Down here we have the bucket with the honey in it, and we have what's called a barrel mixer, or a stand mixer. That motor is not that big, and it's not moving that honey that fast, but it's enough to keep the honey in motion and to keep a skin or film from forming on top. That gives us a couple benefits. One, it makes sure the heat is evenly distributed through this barrel of honey. Two, it keeps the honey moving, and moving fluids are more likely to liberate water or moisture content from them. So that's another perk. The other thing is this is, you know, pulverizing crystals and whatever else comes in contact with that impeller. Now that impeller looks something like this. It is made so it can actually fit inside of a narrow carboy neck because it can go like that and sneak through or a beer bottle neck so to speak and this thing is just down there spinning around and that is enough to break the surface tension and keep the honey moving in that barrel now i'm going to take a drop of honey and let it fall in and see if you guys can see how fast that honey is moving it's only moving the surface maybe half an inch per second but that is enough to keep it working and to keep that honey dry now that motor is making heat the fan that's moving air up top is making heat and the motor's controller is making heat all of these things make some heat that keep this cabinet fairly warm and it tends to park around 95 degrees without me adding anything else the addition is that black thing down there which is a seed starting mat which is just laid to kind of hook around that barrel my thermal controller which was up top kicks that heating mat on any time this box gets below 95 degrees, which it is right now because I have it open. So that means that heating pad will rapidly raise this box up to 97 degrees in temperature. I say rapidly. It takes about half a day. But at that point, this thing will stabilize. The thermal controller will turn off the heating pad, and then the other stuff in here kind of keeps the temperature up. Anytime this box goes below 95 degrees, that heating pad kicks back on and pulls it back to 97. That keeps it at a pretty ideal temperature for getting the honey processed. Now, this honey was at one point way too wet. Uh, it was a mid 18s uh, moisture rating, and it also was very rapid to crystallize. So what I'm going to do with this honey is I'm going to pull down the moisture into a range I'd find preferable. And then I'm going to intentionally crystallize it using a crystal source stock or another creamed honey using the dice method. Uh, but for now, let's pull a sample off of this and see what we have. This is a simple, cheap refractometer. You can buy one of these off Amazon or any number of other locations. They are very affordable. It's a very useful tool to have. I'm just going to take a drop off the top, park it on that surface there, sling the lid, push it down, and now I can point this at a light source and get a reading on it. Okay, this shot's as good as it's going to get. This is about a 17.5% water content, which is a little bit wetter than I'd like it to be, so it just needs a little bit more time in this dryer to hit my sweet target of 17 on the nose. With this video, we've shown you how to address a consistent beekeeping problem, and that is honey that is just a little too wet. I wish you luck building your own honey drying apparatus. And with that, I'll say good luck and happy beeking.